show off a little project we've been working on for about 11 months. Actually, we've had it here longer than that, but 11 months, maybe 12 months is the elapsed amount of time that we've, uh, we've got into it. This is a 1921 Ford Huckster. It's a salesman's car uh, or truck. Uh, in 1921, there were no real uh, large amounts of commercially available trucks. So uh, if you wanted one, what you did was you bought a car chassis, you took it to a local farmer who possibly had a little wood shop, and he would make whatever kind of uh, body you wanted to put on it. Uh, these things are all different styles. Uh, this one is not called a C-cab. It doesn't have doors on it. Uh, it only enters from one side. I guess that was a safety feature because uh, still back in 1921 they had horses and if you stepped out on the driver's side into traffic you'd probably get run over by a horse. Um, this project is uh, not put back as an original but uh, it's all done with uh, factory reproduction parts, uh, all sponsored, mostly sponsored by Ford, with our own little twist. Um, we'll start with the color. First of all, Henry Ford said you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. And John Ryder says you can have any color you want, period. We noticed right away that the manure rails were in bad shape. They were just oak, so we took to uh, bending some uh, aluminum checker plate and we made nice covers uh, that cover the entire uh, surface. We powder coated these with our own powder coating oven and while we were at it we made some additional parts and pieces to uh, cover up things like the top of the leaf spring in the back. There's the leaf spring sticks up in there about two to three inches and so you know that's where it is. Uh, we redid the bed uh, because the uh, steel rails were uh, actually lower than the bed was, so we wanted something a little nicer, so we uh, made them out of oak. And then we also had uh, some uh, cause to put some nice rails on the top of the bed so that if you threw anything in here, it wouldn't uh, eat up the wood. Uh, we made all the woodwork for the, uh, all the oak, the uh, window frames. We actually had windows put in them. That's all safety glass. Um, we had a, an existing window in the front that was a solid piece of glass and I thought I'd like a, a sliding window in there so you could get some air if you didn't want to have the front window open like it is now. And uh, we put a little top over it here to make it look more trucky because it didn't have that before. So all that is hand fabricated by us. All this uh, bronze colored material you see is all hand uh, all powder coated and formed by us. We uh, made every single part of that. The interior of the cab, this was very a, a real stark vehicle. Didn't have any accoutrements in it at all, so uh, I figured we needed to have a little bit of class. So we made some surrounds on the windows that are padded to match the seats that are padded. And then we also put in the first 1921 padded firewall dash. We changed the uh, the way the uh, instrument panel looks. We used the original instruments and flipped them upside down, made a football shaped uh, oak dashboard and uh, used the old bracket and just turned it upside down and mounted it in there. Every electrical part in this car is new. Every part that we could glean from uh, our supplier is, is a reproduction, a new part and uh, some of the parts we actually made ourselves. We also uh, made a custom uh, hood ornament. That's a stock hood uh, ornament or a stock radiator base with a eagle from a cappuccino machine. So we're hoping to make these things uh, uh, one-off that people might like to have. We're getting ready to put the final, final touches on it. We're going to add uh, uh, headlight bezels that are bronze or uh, brass and um, a few other little things and then we're going to start this baby up probably in about uh, two to three weeks. This is a little uh, sign, a placard that we're making that will be posted with our car when we go to shows. It tells what it is and it also kind of uh, gives the uh, project partners, if you will, the people who helped make this thing go together. And then, of course, my friend Nelda Price 
uh, is listed on here as well because without her this thing would have never happened. She's gone now, but this is hers. Um, we rebuilt everything, as I say, the spokes and the wheels are new, the wheel hubs are new, uh, oilers are new, bearings are new, tires are new. So this is, a, for, for practical purposes, this is a brand new car. Okay, uh, right here we've got the motor compartment. Uh, as you can see, we used all uh, reproduction new wiring. This is exactly the way the old stuff looked, except it was in really bad shape. Uh, as you can see, all the wiring in here is new. All the hoses are new. The, this thing should turn over right from the first turn of the key. Um, this particular car had the options of a water pump, which you can see around the other side over here. There's your water pump. That's a reproduction water pump. It looks just like the old one, except this one actually still works. And uh, it also had the other option of an electric starter. Uh, otherwise, you would um, turn the magneto on, and you would come out here, and you'd push that in, and you'd crank this. We actually did have this car started. It actually drove here under its own power. It sat in a field just uh, uh, about a half a mile away from us for over two years. Uh, again, we have a book that's full of pictures, and we'll be uh, posting some of those so you can see the before and after. But uh, this thing actually drove up on its own power. They parked it, and we went to taking it apart. The traditional gas tank you sat on, it was underneath your butt as you're driving down the street. So you, in essence, had a 10-gallon gasoline bomb sitting in under your ass. Uh, I do not want to use that, and I didn't want to put an outside fill spout on there. So what we're going to do is we've, take, we've purchased this uh, vintage kerosene can that it's back in the day that they were having these types of vehicles and we're going to put a spout on it and we're going to use this as the gas tank cleaner than a whistle on the inside because it sat in somebody's barn and that is the original paper tag that was affixed to this back in the 1920s um, we're going to use this by uh, fitting a spout down at the bottom and then running a line under the truck and right straight to the carburetor and this will become our travel tank. Uh, we'll use this if we go to a parade or if we go you know just tooling over to Biff Burgers or wherever we're going to go for the evening and show off the truck and we're going to vent it so that it's, uh, it's a legal thing and uh, we're also going to lock it down so nobody can walk away with our gas supply but I feel better about having a five pound bomb rather than sitting on a 10 pound bomb if you get what I mean. So uh, that's just a little extra something that we did to the truck that uh, I don't know that anybody else has done it or they haven't done it, but you're seeing it first right here live.